I'm Scott Mitchell from the Silver River Museum, and today we're talking about pre-Columbian Florida. Now, the term pre-Columbian refers to the time before Columbus. You'll probably remember from past history lessons that Columbus was one of the very first European explorers to come to the New World, what is now America. The first Spanish explorers arrived in Florida in 1513, and the people who they met when they arrived we call Native Americans or Indians. The Spaniards brought reading and writing with them, so they recorded what they saw. Now, if we want to learn about the time before the Europeans arrived, we have to dig in the dirt and go to places where the Indians used to live thousands of years ago and look for clues. Archaeologists are scientists that study people by things that they have left behind. Now, you've probably also heard primary and secondary sources. If you haven't, we'll be talking about them, and I promise you I'll explain it more later. But the Indians created artifacts. Those are things made by people. They left them behind. Those are called primary sources of information. The first Spanish explorers that came to Florida met those Indians and wrote down what they saw and made pictures and paintings. Those are also primary sources of information. The person that saw the event recorded it. Now let's say that Spaniard went back to Europe, told his buddy, this is what I saw in Florida, and it was amazing. His buddy writes it all down, draws some pictures based on his friend's description. That's a secondary source of information. It's still good information, but it's not recorded from the person that saw it or was there at the event. It's also important to know that people have been in Florida for thousands of years. And when they first moved here, Florida did not look anything like it does today. I'm here on the banks of the Silver River, deep in the swamps of the Silver Spring State Park. Now the Silver River behind me starts at Silver Springs, which is one of the largest freshwater springs in the world. And during the Ice Age, Florida was a much cooler and drier. So places like Silver Springs would have been very important to Native Americans for a source of fresh water, but they also attracted lots of animals that the Indians could hunt. These very first people that moved into Florida we call Paleo-Indians, and Paleo means really old. These were the first people in Florida and they were nomadic. That means that they didn't live in villages and they didn't stay in one place. They followed the game. They didn't have the bow and arrow, they didn't have pottery, and they didn't even have farming yet. So these nomadic hunters and gatherers, these Paleo-Indians, lived here and they also hunted animals from the Ice Age that are now extinct. Animals like the Colombian Mammoth. If you've been to the Silver River Museum, you've seen our great skeleton of a Colombian Mammoth in the museum main gallery. In the Silver River, archaeologists found fossils and very unique spear points that we know date to the Paleo-Indian period in the river. The fossils were from a mammoth and they had spear points in and amongst the bones and the bones had chop marks and cut marks on them which tell us the animal was killed by people and butchered for food. Now this might sound mean for the poor mammoth, but remember those Native Americans 14,000 years ago couldn't go to the grocery store. They had to find or kill what they ate and it was a matter of survival. Now because it was so long ago, do you think we know about this through primary or secondary evidence. Why don't you pause, talk about it just a little bit, and when we come back, we'll discuss it some more. Welcome back. If you chose primary, you would be right. It has to be primary because the people who made those artifacts and butchered that mammoth and left the cut marks on the fossils left those objects there. They're right from the source, the people who made them. This was a significant event in Florida history. It was the arrival of the first Native Americans in Florida. Now, let's look at another place, not too far from here, where people lived thousands of years later in a much different way. The second big event during pre-Columbian Florida was the end of the Ice Age. Things got warmer and a little wetter. The sea level rose. The giant animals like the mammoth that were here during the Ice Age became extinct and populations began to grow. So as populations increased, there were more and more people, they started to settle into villages and they developed things like farming and the bow and arrow and pottery 
and they began to dump their trash in one place and actually create their own high ground. These are called middens. Middens are basically prehistoric trash heaps. And as these middens got to be taller than the surrounding swamps, the people who lived here would actually build their houses up on top of these mounds because it was drier than the surrounding areas. The tribes that were here when the first Europeans arrived started to form during this time. So tribes like the Timucuan and the Calusa and the Appalachee formed during this period. So do you think we have primary and secondary evidence from this period? I'll give you a clue. The very first Europeans that arrived in Florida actually saw these tribes firsthand. So let's pause again, talk about it. When we come back, tell me what you think. Okay, we're back. And if you guessed primary and secondary, you're correct. We have primary evidence because the Tamuqua left artifacts just like the Paleo Indians did. And we have the places where they lived where archeologists can search for clues and artifacts. But we also have Spanish explorers that came to these parts in the early 1500s and actually met the Tamuqua and the Calusa and the Apalachee. They wrote down what they saw in diaries. So those are also primary accounts or primary sources. But when they got back to Europe, a lot of times people would take their work and they would retell the story or they would collect lots of diaries and they would put them in a book and that becomes a secondary source. Do you think you would prefer to be a nomadic hunter-gatherer during the Ice Age or a Timucuan villager thousands of years later, just before the arrival of the first Europeans? Which do you think was a harder life? Which do you think was more comfortable? When the first Spanish explorers arrived in Florida in 1513, they met tribes living in different parts of the state. The tribes had different names, and while they were a lot alike, they lived slightly different lifestyles based on the type of environment that they lived in. We'll talk today about the Timucuan Indians, the Calusa, and the Apalachee. The Timucuan Indians lived in what is now North Central Florida, basically north of Tampa Bay, all the way up towards Jacksonville, and then west over to the Suwannee River. The Timucuan people were farmers. They lived in large villages and they were fairly peaceful. They grew crops like corn, beans, and squash, and also hunted and fished. Some of them lived near the coast, but most of them were interior village-dwelling folks. Hernando de Soto, who was a Spanish explorer that came through what is now Marion County in 1539, passed directly through Timucuan territory. In fact, he recorded the name Ocali as the local tribal group. This is where we get the name Ocala. The second group we'll talk about are the Calusa. The Calusa lived in southwest Florida along the Gulf of Mexico, from about Tampa Bay down towards the Everglades. They were coastal people and fisher folk. The sea was very, very rich in resources and the Calusa did not need to farm. But they built fairly large villages right on the coast and were known as mound builders. They would build mounds from leftover shells from past meals and some of the mounds got to be very, very large. You can see mounds kind of like this over at Crystal River, which is not a Calusa site, but it's a good example of a coastal shell mound. The Calusa were known to be very fierce. The first Spanish that went into their territory were turned back by Calusa warriors shooting arrows at them. They did not want visitors. The Appalachian people lived all the way up in West Florida, in the Florida Panhandle. That's the skinny part of Florida that sticks off to the west. The Appalachian were a lot like the Timucuans in that they were farmers and lived fairly peaceful lifestyles in villages. The thing that made the Appalachian interesting was that several big rivers passed through their territory and went from the Gulf of Mexico way up into the middle of the country. Rivers like the Aklakni or the Apalachicola. These were major trade routes for pre-Columbian Native Americans who would travel these rivers in canoes 
and bring trade goods from as far away as Oklahoma. The Appalachian controlled these rivers and they ended up with lots and lots of interesting fancy items from places far away. The Appalachian were known during early historic times as being a wealthy people, probably because they controlled these rivers that were used for trade. So I hope the whole term pre-Columbian Florida makes a little more sense now. We've learned about a couple of significant events during the prehistory of Florida. The first would be people moving into Florida, walking here. They were nomads during the Ice Age, and Florida looked much, much different. The second was as populations grew, people began to settle into villages and develop special ways of living depending on what kind of environment they were in. Folks that lived close to the coast would specialize as fishing people. People that lived in the forest where there were good fertile soil would become farmers. These were the tribes that we talked about earlier. So as you go through your daily life and you drive around Florida, remember it didn't always look the way it does today. I also want you to remember the difference between primary sources and secondary sources, because it's not only important in the study of prehistory, but it's important in the study of almost anything. Even if you read the news, it's important. Is it a primary source or a secondary source? How much can you trust it? Was the person actually there? These are important things to know. So I look forward to seeing you next time for more cool facts from the Silver River Museum.